the power to force operators of these unscrupulous devices to post calorie counts outside every machine for everything being sold inside that machine. Now, don't say this next lady didn't warn you. With me now, former New York a Lieutenant Governor Betsy McKay, now author of the new book, The Obama Health Law, what it says and how to overturn it. She is the only person in America who has read it. Um, so you know. Yes, here it is on page 456, and not only I was it. I thought it was 455, 456? 455, okay. 26. Okay, Actually, understood. one of the most offensive parts is on page 456, where the Secretary of Health and Human Services will also ha require that a notice be posted about how many calories you should consume yourself during that day. Really? Yes. But there is actually, but could you here's quote the that problem. line there that, uh, on, the, yes. on the vending? A succinct statement concerning suggested daily caloric intake as specified by the Secretary. So the vending machine thing, they would have the power then under this, that is the FDA, to, to give a calorie count like some restaurants do on That's their right, menus. That's right, but let's be clear what the problem is because disclosure is good for consumers. I've been pushing for years for hospitals to disclose infection rates. The issue, the danger here is this. Municipalities and states have the authority to require that kind of disclosure, but nothing in the U.S. Constitution authorizes Congress or the FDA to require this kind of disclosure in a federal system. The powers of the federal government are limited. And not only is the FDA grabbing the power to disclose, to label, but also to limit. You know they're talking about salt, and the next thing will be a caloric limit on a slice of pizza or a Whopper or a Happy Meal. That's not what the FDA was They might as well just shoot me now, but <laughs> So, um, the same FDA that missed this whole egg thing, and, and they lie when they say they don't have the power to police egg Yes, and let me make it clear that the FDA was established a century ago to do just to that. To do just that. To, pre uh, to, to prevent the interstate commerce of of adulterated or dangerous food. Now, let me now, point now, out. Uh, you're a genius here, but just to bring out because a lot of people say, oh, you know, you're against the FDA and giving it money for enforcement. It has that power. It, it has that it with power. Eggs, but now it's going after peanut butter. That's products. right. And it has that power, but only 25% of large food producers are inspected in any year, and only 1% of imported food. Now, there is a real danger. So you think they're wasting their time going after vending machines? Well, or playing nanny state and telling all of us how many calories we should consume in a 24-hour period. What do you think period? is really going on here, Betsy? What do you think this is really all about? This is the federal government demanding more and more power over our everyday lives and expanding the government bureaucracy. You can see the swelling of government jobs and the shrinking of private sector jobs and the loss of our liberty. What's another surprise coming our way? Well, there are several other constitutional violations in here. Nothing in the Constitution authorizes the federal government to compel you to buy a one-size-fits-all health plan, whether you want it or not, whether you can afford it or not. In addition, uh, this, this law commandeers state officials and makes them do the bidding of Congress, for example, setting up insurance exchanges, regulating uh, premium rates. The states have never been servants of the federal government in a federal system. They have their own authorities, and yeah. people elect them to do their own jobs. So this, this law shreds our Constitution. Okay. I take your word for it because you read it. Right. right. I'm waiting for the cliff notes. <laughs> Betsy, thank you very much. Really, you've been way ahead on this. Thank you very, very much.